You're listening to Reimagined Radio. Real talk, real life, real magic. Welcome to Love, Life, and Law of Attraction, the show that is all about helping you find the love you want in your life and loving the life you have right now. World-class experts, thought-provoking topics, and conversations and tools that are going to help you live the life you really want starting today. So pour yourself a cup of tea, have a seat, and get ready to join Love, Life, and Law of Attraction. Well, hello, everybody. This is Lisa from Love, Life, and Law of Attraction, coming to you from a really beautiful, sunny October day in Washington State. And what I want to talk about today is the five most common excuses for not doing your deliberate attraction practices. When you work with a Law of Attraction coach, it is really likely that they're going to ask you what your alignment practices are. I know it's a question that I ask many times every week when I'm working with my clients. And it is always a little surprising to me to hear a lot of variations on the response that says, I'm not doing any alignment work about this issue or in my life right now at all. I know for a fact that life flows a lot more smoothly when I'm taking care of my stuff like a grown-up woman. And that means things like paying the bills and doing my self-care and doing my alignment practices daily. And for me and for you, in case you're wondering, when I get loose around the edges with those kinds of things, any of them, actually, I start to feel the wheels of the bus come off pretty quickly. If I don't pay my bills, the power gets shut off. If I don't do my self-care, I get sick or tired or just like ridiculously bitchy. And when I don't do my alignment practices, things start to misfire all over the place. Life just gets significantly more difficult. When things get bumpy, rather than feeling like a victim, like things are beyond my control, I know I simply need to get my act together and get back to the basics. And the basics are... Take care of the business that needs taking care of. Make my self-care a priority and do my alignment work. And even in that list, I've got it wrong. Did you notice that? Because I put do my alignment work last. When really doing my alignment work should be the first thing on the list because it makes all of the other things I have to do flow a lot more smoothly. We've all got real stuff in the world that needs doing. I get that. Self-care keeps me upright and it keeps my body in balance and back to the basics of being able to take care of my life because I, I feel good. It fuels the energy I bring into my alignment work and it makes that a lot easier to do consistently. However, when I'm under pressure, when we all end up under pressure, It can be really easy to let things like self-care and alignment work, particularly our deliberate creation practices, slip in favor of doing things like paying paying the electric bill or taking care of getting the tires on the car changed or the day to day kind of stuff. Life has a way of creeping in and we let it creep in. I know I do and I see it happen for a lot of people. But when life creeps in and we're not managing our energy, life gets a lot more complicated. There, it turns out to be a lot more things creeping in. So when I talk to a client that says they're not working on their alignment practice, as frustrating as that is, because we all do it, I get it. My current alignment practice is pretty simple, but I mean, My alignment practice changes from sometimes or from time to time sometimes. I mean, right now, I can be on top of it where I don't feel like it's taking up a lot of time during my day, but it doesn't matter what I'm practicing. If I'm not actually practicing it, I feel the effects in my life. And so will you. My clients do. There's a lot of excuses. 
So these are the top five excuses that I have heard and I have offered, by the way, for not doing alignment practices. There's not enough time. Sound familiar? Have you ever said that? (laughs) Yeah. But let me ask you a question. How much time do you spend on Facebook or watching TV every day? If you answer that question with any more than 10 minutes, you've got plenty of time. You just aren't using your time to create a life. You're using it to consume rather than to create or to numb out or to be entertained rather than create. Alignment practices don't have to take a ton of time. And saying that you don't have time, which is an excuse, like I said, that I have used, is probably the cheapest excuse in the book. We all have a few minutes every day. We can allocate a few minutes or repurpose a few minutes for creating a life we love. Number two, I get distracted. (laughs) Okay. Well, I get distracted while I'm making dinner by about 30 different things every single night, but dinner gets made every way or any way. We work through distractions when we need to get shit done. That's exactly how shit gets handled. We do it despite the distractions. So what if you get distracted? I mean, do it anyway. And the more you work with your deliberate creation practices, the stronger your muscles of concentration and attention become. So it becomes easier not to get as distracted. But if you get distracted, so what? Just redirect your attention, get back on it, and get it done. Number three, I get bored. Dude, you can't focus on something you really want for more than a few minutes without getting bored. Then... You don't have a very exciting vision for your life. A monkey mind is a real thing. However, if you really can't get that monkey mind back in check for more than a few seconds or minutes, chances are you're trying to manifest something that is boring. Go bigger. Get crazy. Be bold. And you won't be bored. I mean, boredom probably stems out of trying to be too too practical, too realistic. So. Get really, really big and bold with what you're trying to manifest. Play with it like a child who is pretending they're an astronaut or a doctor or an explorer. That's not boring. If you're delivering to create practice, it's keeping your attention. Go bigger. Dedicate yourself to something so inspiring, you can't help but obsess about it. Anything else, anything else, something small, it's going to feel like really heavy lifting. Number four, I don't know how to do it right. Here's the thing. If you're telling yourself that story, it's probably true. The only rule of thumb for air quotes right and air quotes wrong is simple. If you're having fun with it, you're doing it right. And if you're not having fun with it, you're probably right. You're probably not doing right. You were born with an innate ability to do this thing called life. You were born to be able to navigate this system actually pretty effortlessly. The technology is already built in. You're already a brilliant creator. You are already creating. Start telling yourself that story because it's true and then go have some fun with what you're trying to create. Number five, nothing is working. I hear that one a lot. I felt that way. First, and most important part of any manifestation or alignment practice is that it improves the way you feel. If that's happening, even a little bit, even for a moment, it is working. Time and space are complicated things that are way above our pay grade most of the time. And if your alignment practice feels good and you feel better, quit worrying about the time frame or the details or the delivery. Your stuff is on the way. Your alignment practice is simply a thing that reminds you, if you don't have your stuff yet, you've got more work to do in the feeling department. And if your alignment practice does nothing but remind you you don't have your stuff yet, it doesn't do anything to improve your feel good, stop doing that and do something else or nothing at all. Here's the thing. It's called co-creation for a reason. If you're not doing your part, the co-creating is happening by default. Nine out of ten times, default creation is less than awesome. might be tolerable. 
might be manageable, but it's not going to be incredible. It's a lot like a ship that's out to sea. You aren't at the helm or at least actively charting a course and setting your instruments to get there. You'll keep sailing, but you're going to end up adrift, and there's no way around that. You've got to get your head and your energy in the game. This is your life and your creation, and you can give it as much time as you would as any sitcom during the day. And if you choose not to, that's all right. Pack for a very long journey because you'll be out to sea probably longer than you want to. Excuses are just excuses. I mean, we can drop them and focus our energy on what really matters. And so for today, my advice to you and myself, move your deliberate creation practices to the top of your list, of your to-do list. And I guarantee the rest of your day and the rest of your life will be better off for it. If you have any questions, if you need me for anything, if you want to check in, you can visit me at lisamhays.com. Have a great day. Everyone talks about self-care. No one ever really teaches you how to do it. Love is a verb. If you want to love yourself more, you have to treat yourself like someone who's worthy of love. Behavior first feelings will follow. The Self-Care Clinic is a free digital course that will teach you to behave your way to self-care and self-love. You will learn a practical, measurable approach to self-care that will save your sanity and might just save your life. Go to www.theselfcareclinic.online. That's www.theselfcareclinic.online. Register for free today. Thank you for joining us on Love, Life, and Law of Attraction. We hope you enjoyed the show, and we'll see you back here next week. For more information, you can find me at lisamhays.com.